good afternoon and I welcome you on 6th, 7th and 8th channel of Baiju's. I'm your teacher Ankita and in today's class we will be discussing about some really very interesting chapter from civics. So I hope that all of you are ready and I hope that all of you are really very excited for this important chapter from the exam point of view. So if you can hear me and if you can see me please make sure to write in the comment section. Hi everyone! Good afternoon, good afternoon. Hi Manju. Hi Nirav. Hi All Shots. Hi Mansi. Hi Alisha. Hi Ankita. Hi Ankit. Hi Ashnoor. All Shots and Video. Hi. Hi Pranjal. Hi Sakshi. Hi Perijayan. Yes, we have Menti. Hi Gungun. Hi Dipashri. Manjeet. Purnima. Nirav. Divya. Dia. Creative Adya. Janali, Mixed Bag, Jyotika, so many of you are here everyone. All shots and video as of now, we don't have it today. We have it from the civics chapter, so I hope that all of you are ready. I'm good everyone. Thank you Dipashri for asking, I hope that you are also good. Yes, are we ready everyone? Yes, first congratulations to each one of you. We have completed 50k subscriber, Ta -da! kudos to each one of you. And yeah, we did did amazingly well. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> yes, everyone. Yay, yes. All thanks to all of you. Right? All thanks to all of you. And we are very happy that, you know, we are a family of 50k now. Prajanya. Prajanya. Yes, Prajanya. Hi, Satyam. Congratulations to each one of you. Okay, everyone. See, I can see so many of you here. Please make sure to hit the like button. Yes, next, next target is 100k. For sure it is. We don't have Menti now. So I will be giving you Menti later. Once we will finish these chapters. Right? Okay? Everyone, a quick thumbs up. Please make sure to hit the like button for the video. Hit the like button, everyone. We will start. Awesome. Now, if you look over here, there are two chapters. Okay? Everyone... Right? Now everyone, come on, come on, come on. We have very, very less time. We have one and a half hours with us and we have to make sure that we are understanding these two chapters and looking at the questions and of course then we have Menti also. So I want all of you to pay attention. Pinky promise everyone. Pinky promise. Deal done, right? Hello Aditya. Amrahini. Yes, we do have Menti today. Hi Ashok. Hi Gopal. Right, so we have two chapters today and these two chapters are understanding marginalism, right of course and confront, confronting it. So these two are very very easy topic I would say and these two chapters we are studying together because they are interconnected. So it will be helping us to understand in one go only, okay. Hello Abhilasha, hello, hello, hello Rani, okay, hi Mranal. So let's get started everyone. First we are discussing about the first part of it. Yeah, this is from the civics chapter. Yes, this is from the civics. Yes. Hello Ankita. Okay, we have Menti Avni. But all of us have to wait. We will have Menti only after we will finish the theory part of it. Okay. Yes. Awesome everyone. I hope that all of your energy is really very high. Hello Babita. Hi everyone who is joining. I'm good. Thank you for asking. Abhilasha, I hope that you're also good. Okay, hi Tina. Yes. Okay, there are two things everyone. Two things I want from you. Let's make sure that we pay attention, right? Yes. Okay, Tina. Everyone, right? We will not be talking about it. Yes, we less talk. Less of talks. Like I'm like those monitor in class. Less talks everyone. <laughs> okay. And please make sure... Please make sure you ask doubts, but wait, I will be answering your doubts, but once a particular topic is done, right? We will not be going here and here, here. Okay. Okay, can you give me a quick thumbs up? Very good. A quick thumbs up, everyone, from your side, and we will start. Yes. Everyone, please make sure to hit the like button, and please give me a quick, quick, quick thumbs up in the chat so that we know that we are good to go, and we will start our... Sessions. Very good. 
Here we go everyone, so the first chapter, right, we have these important objectives that we will be understanding, right? So first of course we'll be discussing that what is marginalization? Marginalization, right? What we understand by this word, margin, there of course there's one word which is margin that is definitely there and we have added few more, you know, part to it. Then, who are the people who are in, you know, who are the minor people in minority? We'll be discussing about the Adivasis, migra, then we'll be discussing about the Muslim community. And then of course, we'll be looking and we'll be understanding that how the constitution is helping, helping them. Okay? Clear everyone? Are we clear? You can take a screenshot of this. It's the first chapter and we have all this. Okay? Clear. Very good. And again, as we will start now, I would request all of you to please pay attention to the class. I might not able to call out your names right directly yes i will not be able to take all of your name directly because there are so many of you here in class but you know that i can see your answers and if you have doubt please write over here i will pick it okay clear nancy that's class 8 chapter and we have to do but that's why we are discussing this chapter yes will be the 50k awesome let's start everyone now let me ask you a question what is equality now what according to you is equality i will talk about equal thing right so we know that all citizens are equal and of course they deserve to live with dignity. I hope all of us agree on this particular fact that all of us are in a community, right? All of us are living over here and all of us needs the equality in terms of our basic rights, right? We, we should live our lives with dignity and with respect. There are times I'm sure we know that, what do you think? Do you think that we have a time when we can see we have inequality yes or no yes what will happen if there is the absence of inequality just imagine that maybe we are living in a country where inequality is very common and equality is not so common if you want to go to school people will be like uh huh you know what mm, you should not go equality sonam equality means a right basically equality means equal Right? For example, if you are going to school, the same right goes to a neighbor, right? A neighbor student or a neighbor child. Yes. Ha! Very good, right? So we know that it's important for us to have the equality. Okay. Let me ask you, let me ask you this. So what see? So what we see over here, right? I'm sure you can see over here, right? We have a girl. And uh, she is a little bit challenged, right? Yes, we can see over here. Now, of course, they, that girl is sitting over there on a wheelchair. And of course, we can see there are stairs on the other side, right? We have the stairs. Now, when we talk about these stairs, right? Do you think it's right? I'm sure you must have seen that at various places, we have a certain facilities where, of course, we have the ramp, right? With where the people with the wheelchair can easily walk. Not walk in terms of basically they can easily move. Sorry. Not walk but they can actually move their wheelchair. Okay. Yes. Very good. Right in your school. Yes. 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 Absolutely correct. So for those of you who are asking Menti, Jordan, uh, Pavneet, we have Menti. But Menti will be there only after one hour. Basically at the end of the session. Yes. Okay. Right everyone. So basically these individuals also are a part of our society and they also need the equal justice or they also need the equality in terms of their basic needs. So when we discuss about that, what is it? We understand that margin. Okay. How many of you know what is the word of margin? What is the meaning of margin? Right? marginalization marginalization right basically we know that someone is the margin we say no yeah the boundary of it yeah it's at the margin we have that understanding right so it is a treatment of a group as insig insignificant right basically even though the word margin is there we don't consider them right basically these people according to some people are not there and of course these people don't get a fair treatment 
right they are basically on the other side yes this is from the civics absolutely correct everyone so marginalization is nothing but the treatment of the group as insignificant we will not be able to notice them basically a sheer lack of notice by the government by the group of people and they and these people actually suffer and they have a lot of disadvantage right and we call them as minorities also clear everyone are we clear with the word marginalization right this is clear to each one of us right common question asked in the examination so we should know the definition of it one marks question very good pravneet please don't spam very good very good okay now that we are clear with this now these people for example let's i'm just taking my example over here so that none of us feel bad or sad about it for example if i am an individual right and let's suppose there is a person who's coming from not so educated background right and of course they are coming here and they are doing work but when i look at them or maybe some x y and z person look at them they don't treat them as an individual i'm sure you must have seen in the movies i'm sure you must have seen in your surrounding also that there are few set of people who will not be treated with respect will not be treated with the humanity or will, will not be treated with the kindness maybe a uh, watchman right maybe someone who is actually cleaning your society gardens or the society stairs i'm sure you you would have seen people talking very rudely to them people sometimes feel that they are the god and they don't consider the other individuals as a human being they forget the basic etiquette or the basic kindness we need so why we have this chapter i want to start with that first why we have this chapter in class why we are studying this i'm sure all these question comes to your mind hum kyu pad rahe hain sab hame kya zarurat hai see everyone you are the future and i always always tell you you are the future of this country and if you understand all of this right now you will be able to do so much good for our nation so it's important for us to understand this right for us to understand ki what what is wrong is being done how we can make it correct and how you while studying all of this can gain the knowledge and can do wonders so please make sure you pay attention to all of these amazing classes right yes absolutely correct i am so proud of you that all when i see your responses you are so mature you are so understanding it feel really very good yes very good yes that's why that you become a good citizen that you don't repeat the mistakes which were repeated by the past generation and you take right right and of course you take the nation ahead yes abhi so we are just discussing about this bachche which is just discussing about the very important word that we have in this particular chapter which is the marginalization right very good we are from class 5th welcome to the class yes okay so the first thing is done right we have the understanding now let's talk about that what is who are the people who are the one who will be adding into the category of minor or in the minority okay you are also in class with welcome to the class see everyone we have different set of religion and we have different set of people in our country right i'm sure in terms of religion i'm sure you would have heard about the sikh parsi jain buddhism christianity right now in our country right in our, in our country india the majority are the hindus right and in terms of the inequality when we talk about or in minorities yes so in the minorities are those of course who are there in a very small number not just the number of the individual but of course the followers what they have right and of course it's very limited so that's we have the minority clear yes komal uh, sorry sonam equality equality means the way each individual have the equal equal rights to be treated equally for example if all of you are here in the class i should be treating you all equally right without any uh, rudeness to one particular individual or without being very fair to one particular individual right as a teacher when i am in the class i should be treating you all equally so that is your right of equality you don't have to basically take any sort of disrespect against you right so this is what we have over here that's a fair meaning of equality yes adiva a little bit but right on time 
Yes, Devin, welcome to the class. Okay. Now, everyone, when we're talking about the min minorities, it just do does not mean only the numbers. But of course, it means that that there are we have the minorities and not just the number of the people, but of course, in terms of the religion, in terms of the language we speak, and in terms of the uh, cultural differences that we have. I'm sure if you have uh, you know if you have met someone who follows the Jainism right as a religion. You must have seen they have a very different set of culture than in, let's suppose, Hinduism or any other uh, religion. Similarly, we have Christianity, we have Parsi, Sikh and Buddhist, right? Each of these have their own religious belief. And of course, we can say that they are not in that ma many mass number, but still they are a part of our country. And India being a secu uh, no, secular state, respect all the re religion and have the freedom of course in a country that any individual can follow any sort of religion are we clear yes very good this is civics class 8 yeah you can check and you can look actually at the thumbnail of the video yes very good very good be yourself how many religion are there we have so many religion in terms of in if you want numbers you can definitely do a little bit more research on that Manjeet, it's, it's there everywhere, right? Minority means less, yeah. Yes, in a very small amount. Okay, very good. So we are clear with this, right? And unfortunately, what happens when the, there are people who are in a minority, they suffers few things, right? Definitely, they have limited access to the resources. They, of course, they have unequal share of the power and increased insecurity. So when we talk about this, right? Right in the my minorities. See, for example, I'm I'm sure you would have seen this. Okay, let's suppose you are in a class, right? You are in a class, and there's a new individual. Let's suppose maybe you you are there in a class, and a student joined in the month of August, right? And you were there in the class since the month of April, right? I'm sure you would have your own set of friends. You would have your own set of uh, rules that you follow in the class. You, you, you have a good understanding with the teachers and so and so and so forth. But as a new student come in the month of August, that particular person we can consider as minorities, right? Minorities, right? They don't have much to say. They are very less in number. Now when they come, what happens? Of course, uh, they definitely have to struggle, right? They'll not be able to gel with you on a very first day. I'm sure there'll be a lot of difference between you and them. It'll take some time. It will, it will take some while for them to adjust with you and you to adjust with them. So initially they were in a minority. They will not have the resources. They'll not have the power to share, right? They cannot be the class monitor. Of course, you'll be like, oh, ah, this boy and this girl just came yesterday, ma'am. We are more experienced. We should be the one, right? You will not let them go to the school to get the staff room to collect the notebooks and etc etc so the minority people when we talk in terms of the country and of course these people are the ones they don't have the proper resources that means that they're not able to develop themselves in terms of the education and in terms of the wealth and unfortunately they will always be insecure about their surrounding where they're living what they're eating and etc etc so it's it's very important for us to understand about the minorities right and then what we can do for them are we clear yes i can see there are a lot of people who are asking we have menti menti yes menti here but abhi nahi menti we will have it at the end yes purnima can you write your doubt again what was your doubt clear very good very good okay let's talk about this everyone okay that why we should study about the, you know, why we should study about this important topics and why should we, why we are doing this. We are doing this so that we can inquire about them in the society, we can represent them. Yes, Purima, you are asking what is the second largest religion. You can actually find it out. I will not be able to comment on this. Different surveys have different reports, right? So you can definitely find it out over here. And if not, by the end of this class, I will answer your question. Okay? We must inquire about it and we must be informed about what is happening in society and we must, right, up, we, we must be working to uplift these communities. That's why we should be studying about them. 
Very good, very good. Are we clear? Yes. Okay, Poonima, I hope that you got your answer. First is Christianity, then we have the Islam. Okay. Yes, Vinita, very good. Thank you for sharing that information. Hi, Jaya, welcome to the class. Yes, Adiva. Okay. Namaste, Dinesh. Are we clear, everyone, that why are we studying this? Okay. Now, let's talk about the Adivasis. So, in this particular chapter, the majority of the portion that we have are covering the Adivasis. Let's look over here. So, now, the, the meaning of Adivasis originally is one who is not, the, the main word is inhibitant, right? So, these people are the one that, <clears throat> they don't have a place. Habited, right? Habited. Now, of course, we have a habit that, that means that we live at certain place. place. But of course, these people up there, they don't have a place. Okay? That's why we call them as Adi Vasis. Then of course, uh, now of course in the official documents, the Adi Vasis are officially mentioned or you know, uh, says as the schedule or the scheduled tribe. Okay? Please make sure you remember this. Very good, very good. Yes. They are, not, they are not exactly nomads because they have a certain place. But of course they don't live like us. The way we live, they does not, uh, you know, they don't do that. Yes, Jordan, please make sure you are focusing here in class and Manjeet, you also. Adiva, you also. Right? The moderators here, please do take care if you find if there is any disturbance in the chat. Yes, Vinita. Yes, we will discuss about it, Vinita, in, in a bit. Okay. So Adivati, basically Adivasis have their own language, they have their own culture and of course they have their own system. They have their own system in terms of hierarchy, right? And of course as per, as per the 2000, uh, 2011 survey, right, 500 Adivasis groups are there and total percent in India population, 8% we have of the Adivasis or the scheduled tribe. Are we clear? Very, very important percentage, everyone. Please take a note of it. So, in terms of the population in our country, 88%, not 88, 8%, right? They contribute to the population of our country. And we have more than 500 groups of Adivasis, okay? Very good. It's class 8th. Jaya, it's class 8th. Yes, Manjeet. Okay. Yes. Peri Jayan, over here we have Bajje. Those people who are actually, you know, does not have a place. Basically, they are the one that lives in the forest, right? And they are not living in the cities. They depend upon the forest. We call them as Adivasis. Yeah. So, of course, they have a, they, these groups have a two-way interaction. This is very important, everyone. They have their own religion, their language, their cultural belief. And, of course, we have these examples over here also, Right? We have Jagannath cult of Orissa and Bengali language. Then we have other religions also. And these people are the one who usually work, or, you know, they basically worship the people, not the people, people, the God. They usually worship the forest, the animals, the plants, right? Because they live and they are surrounded by them. So they have a very strong belief in the biodiversity. Clear? So these are the ones that actually, uh, you know, follow and they are in a love with biodiversity. I'm sure you would have heard stories, right? Uh, that how people worship the animal or how people worship a plant, right? Because they live in that surrounding and they actually value it, okay? Then, over here, this is a very important point that after the, you know, the, when the British came to our country, what, what we saw, that they went inside the forests and they converted these Adivasis into the Christianity. They provided them with the resources and converted them into the Christianity. Are we clear? Yes. Be yourself, I'm not sure what you're saying. Please, I'm not sure about this. Biodiversity means different types of plants and animal species are that we have. We call them as bio, that is biodiversity. Yes. Yes, Vinita, absolutely correct. Yes. Schedule tribe, yes. Protection, they convert them so that they can provide them the resources and they increase the number of the people who are, who are following their religion. Yes. Okay, everyone, I hope that it's clear. Yes. Not all the people were Adivasis, but the people who are actually living in the interior of the forest, right? They are the one. Okay. So we are talking about the Adivasis. I'll revise it, but not now. Give me a minute, right? 
and of course they are the people who have been portrayed in a very stereotype okay how many of you have seen okay uh, like, this is a very interesting question how many of you have seen you know the traditional dance that we have that we usually see on 26th of January where we have you know a group a certain set of group will be representing their national dance or not the national dance basically their native dance how many of you have seen it and I'm sure you would have seen it on the television also yes be yourself yes we can do that yes very good very good right I'm sure you would have seen them on the television right so what happens when we see them we actually think okay, huh, they are they're not that, that educated. We feel that, oh, what kind of clothes they are wearing. Oh, what kind of dance they are doing. Right? And what we think that they are not very educated and they are not very cultured. We have the stereotypical portrait, portrait of the uh, Adivasis and the scheduled tribe in our movies, in the series, in the books and what so not. So, when we have this, it just gives us a picture that these are illiterate people. And they don't have any culture which is very very wrong we know that they have a such a important and huge culture and yes they are educated too so we should have an understanding about the Adivasis not all right of course not all the Adivasis are the one that were doing hunting initially back back long years back when they were living in a forest that of that is a time when they don't have a proper houses and they, they used to hunt and they were dependent on the natural resources but now of course they have come to cities they are studying and they are in higher positions and they are educated too clear Pavneet stereotypical means stereo stereotypes right we think about for example we have a stereotype that all girls like pink color it could be a stereotype I'm giving you an example right giving you an example so that could be a stereotype that okay all girls love pink or all boys like black it could be a different color also right so we should when we have a certain set of mindset for the certain people we call it as a stereotype clear everyone quick thumbs up come on quick thumbs up everyone i hope that all of you are clear See, I can see we have some of the students from the lower grades, right? From 5th, 6th and 7th and 8th. And we have students from 8th class also. So I understand that, you know, we all want to study and I'm really happy to see all of you here. So let's focus in the class, right? Yes. If you have any doubt, you can go back and watch the session again. Don't worry. So on a very quick note, uh, the Aussies are those people, right? Which, of course, are, uh, you know, they are the one who are living initially in the forest and were dependent on the natural resources but now the official term that we use for them is a scheduled, uh, scheduled tribe right and they have their own languages they have their own culture and they follow it and they make about eight percent of the india's population important thing about them is that they are different right they have different types and they have different uh, ways of living and we should not be having any stereotype for them yes Ah, for them also we have the schools yes okay so everyone are we clear up to here right I can see thumbs up and other things very good and a smiley note okay yes Vinita it's okay very good very good okay now what we have over here right we have the Adivasi's culture and the economic history let's talk about the culture everyone okay now the important thing about the culture about uh, about these of course is that they're, they're very close to the nature very close to the nature they depend upon the nature they worship this is what we were discussing about they worship it right and of course they have their own languages which is very old than the sanskrit itself so if you look over here can you see this part the colored part over here right over here we have the tribes right the tribal part of the country initially it was over here and there were the people who are living there and they have a very specific language called as a santhali okay and this particular language is spoken by the majority of the tribal group right and there was this particular language is spoken in Chhattisgarh in Jharkhand, Bihar, Assam, West Bengal, Orissa, Tirupura and in Mizoram also right so over here we have this clear then of course the uh, Santhali is actually one of the official language of our country 22nd official language right so we have 22 official languages in our country 
out of that Santhali is one of them. Very important thing everyone, please make sure. So we know that Adivasis are the people, right, who have the very rich culture. They will worship the forest, right, they will worship the animals, the plants, right. They were very dependent on the natural resources, right. Then of course we're talking about the language of one marks question everyone. The language that majority of the tribal part, tribal or you know community are speaking is the Santhali and it is one of the official language of our country also. Yes? Very good. So I hope that this is clear. Okay. Now I was talking about the economic history and I can see that they were had, uh, you know many of you have a question about what is economy. So let's talk about the economy. Basically, when we have some profits, right, when we talk in terms of the products moving up and down and how they were actually living, that's how we have the economic history. So these people, we know that as they're dependent on the forest, right, they, they were completely dependent on the forest and they will be taking the resources from there only. So they're very much dependent on it and they will not migrate to different other cities to work. They will have the shift agriculture, right? From one particular part to another part, they will move from a small piece of land to another land where they'll do the agriculture. But then they will not be moving to the cities for the work. Clear? And of course, they have the dependency on the resources only. We know that when the Britishers came to our country, what we know that we saw that they actually went inside the forest and they took the rights from them. They said that if you want to hunt over there, if you want to use any resources, you have to give us money. You basically have to give us tax. So, they exploited the natural resources and they took the Adivasi's land. And they forced them to work. And of course, they made them work in the various, various, various field. Okay. Are we clear everyone up to here? Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much everyone. Let's come back. And just, so Purana, Purana jo hume, uh, Pavneet, jo basically ancestors jis hume bolte hai, jo humari Purani jo cheeze hoti hai, humare Purvaj, thik hai, jo humare Purvaj language bolte the, Purvaj ko ghar. I hope that it's clear. Okay? Then, now after the independence also, there was a lot of exploitation of the Adivasi's people land, right? So, the, uh, uh, at that particular time also a lot of land were cleared for the construction, for the construction of various industries and the factories, right? And of course, because of that, the Adivasis were forced to move to the different places. They have to migrate. And of course, they were losing their, uh, basically, they were losing their houses also. So it's important that, you know, the private industries at that particular time were actually taking up their land, taking up their resources and forcing them to migrate to different other place. Are we clear everyone? Yes? Are we clear? So their land was also taken by forcefully, right? They were not educated. So someone will come and say, okay, you know what? We will give you some land. We will give you the job. Put the thumb put the signature on the paper and unknowingly they will do that and of course that cost them their land and they were forced to move to the different parts of the country I'm sure we all are aware about the dam right Sardar Sarovar dam recently we had that discussion the uh, basically two lakhs people in the Gujarat, Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh were Adivasis and they have to move because there was a construction of the dam which was happening right and we will see a lot of displacement happening Displacement over here is a very important word. Displacement. What is the meaning of displacement over here? When we are forcing the people to move from one place to another. Right? We call it as a dis displacement of the people. So Adivasis were living happily in their place. Right? Britishers came. They were like, no, you have to give us tax. Or we will not let you use the resources. Same thing followed after the independence also. People exploited them by taking their land forcing them to work in the plantations, forcing them to work in the mining and they took all their resources saying that we will give you money. But instead of that, they took their land, took the money and took their everything. Because of these reasons only, we have the scheduled tribe which are still very behind from the rest of us because they didn't get a proper opportunity. Are we clear everyone? Yes, are we clear? Clear, clear, clear. Very good, very good. 
See everyone, it's a very important and such an easy topic. I want all of you to be participating in uh, the discussion. Yes, Vinita. Yes, currently. Yes, our president also belongs to the... Yes, absolutely correct. Very good. Crystal clear, right? Now, adding more to it, I'm sure. So when the Britishers came and when the government came, they actually took the national parks also. So they said that, you know what, this area will declare as a national park, but you will not be able to live here. This is the wildlife century, but you have to move from it. So we have so many people, 8,000 people, there are very important information, 8,000 people of the Saharia tribe were displaced from the Kurno in Madhya Pradesh, right? And of course, in 1998 to 2002, for the wildlife conservation. They told that we were, we are making a national park, so you have to move, which is definitely not right. Apart from that, right, the Adivasis group, especially in the northeast part of a country. Did you see over here, everyone? Especially in the northeast part, right, as it's a very close to the border, what had happened that there were a lot of militarization. A lot of military went over there, right? And they took the land. Basically, of course, they were protecting the countries. But in that, in that order, these people were moved from their places. Are we clear? Right? So, military become more in this particular places because of the country safety. And because of that, they have to take the land. And these people actually move to the different places. And because of that only, I'm sure, if you read the newspaper, there's still a lot of friction between the Indian government and the Northeast states. Clear? We will have Menti only after, the, only after finishing this chapter. Yes, are we clear everyone? Very good, very good. Awesome. Now, let's, this is the very important thing everyone, take a screenshot. Two important things, if it comes in, in the question paper, that what were the challenges faced by the Adivasi community? There are two. First, of course, the coming of the military into their area and the displacement. Okay, this is how you can write the answer. Okay, it's a three or four marks question, everyone. Big marks, basically, three marks question. Okay, nothing. We have already discussed it. It's just for you to have it in your memory. Acha. This is a very important thing. So, government of a country, right? We have an act, Forest Right Act, which came into the action in the 2006. And according to it, it says that unholding of the historical justice, right? That we will be providing the food security and livelihood to the people who are migrating. This is very important. Protecting their tribal, uh, you know, population and giving them the houses and the shelter, right? And this was there under the Ministry of the Tribal Affair. Are we clear? Yes, so government also took, right? Government also took part in making sure that there's a proper welfare of the people. Yes, very good, Vinita. Yes, it is. Very good, everyone. Okay. Now, let's talk about the next, next important topic. Now, I want full participation from you. And we'll be discussing about the another community which we have is the Muslim community. What was the second point over here? Ensuring, uh, who is asking? Pavneet, the government made sure that they will be giving them the food and a place to live. Livelihood and of course to livelihood and basically in terms of the job. They will give them the jobs also. Pranjal, rehabilitation means they will be providing them the shelter. For example, if you are moving from one house, right? But if you are moving to one another city, so the job that you are doing or the company that you are with, they will give you the house in the next city also. Okay? Making sure that your moving becomes really very smooth. Pranjal and Vinita, I hope that you got this correct. Okay. Now let's talk about, yes, now let's talk about the uh, Muslims in our country. Right? The Muslim community in our country. So they are the groups and the individuals who are often discriminated. Of course, we have different set of people in our country, right? And uh, off lately, I'm sure you would have seen a lot of arguments where we have in terms of the Hinduism and in terms of the Muslims, right? They are treated differently and by the society and of course in our surrounding also. So, what we can do and what we understand, let's look into that particular part. 
So these community people are, you know, they are very less in number and of course they have a lot of insecurities that whether they are in a, uh, you know, whether they will be treated rightly, whether they will get the job or whether they'll get the houses and so on, etc. Let's understand more about them. So, okay, over here we have Gheto, right? And of course we have the Gethism right over here is a Muslim community. Of course, when a group set of people, right, an area, Gheto. Right, if they are living together in a locality by a large, by a single community, we call that, right? We call them as a Gito. Basically an area where we have a single community people in a very large mass. Now, in, especially in terms of the Muslims community in our country, we have seen that they have less of, they have less chances of everything in terms of economy, social and the culture. There are a lot of cultural differences between these community right and what we have seen in the past that because of that their economic development is being stopped right and of course we have this graph of course we have in your textbook also and you can see this right it's a report in of of the year 2011 and if you see over here we have different religion we have hinduism we have muslims we have christianity and we have sikh in terms of the pakka house we can see that muslims are the ones which have the almost similar to the Hindus but still they have less pakka houses. Same goes for the electricity and the tap water. So this graph actually tells us about the conditions. Pavni, that means ruka hua, thera hua, what stopped. Basically their development has been stopped. There's no growth, right? If they have reached to a certain place, they're still there. There's no growth, okay? Yes, very good. So this graph is important everyone. Please do make sure that you read this graph before your examination. Same thing is happening with the education also. So in Muslims, uh, according to the census and according to the reports and the graphs that we have in your textbook, they, we have less, right? Uh, Muslims are still a little bit behind in terms of the education according to the government uh, census that we have because they are, they are not getting that opportunity. Yes, yes, Gungun, they have. Yes, according to the graph that we have in your books, we have. Okay? Now, everyone, to, to tackle it, right, we have a very important individual who came into the picture and we have the Sachar community. So, it was led by Rajendra, Sachar, right? And this community made sure that the number of students, number of children between 6 to 14, right, will be enrolling into the school and there will be no dropout, right? Of course, basically they said that according to their reports, basically the number of the number of Muslim children between 6 to 14 who have never enrolled and of course has a dropout was really very high. He figured it out that the number of students who are dropping out from the schools are really very high. Okay? Are we clear everyone? Yes, are we clear? Come on, it's a very easy thing. Please make sure. Yes, right? So, of course, they planned that we have to increase the education system first, for sure. Okay? The school, economy and the education situation of the Muslims compared to the other were definitely, definitely, you know, they compared it with the uh, scheduled tribe and the, with the, with the uh, scheduled caste. And they thought that we have to uplift it. To make sure what they did, there were a lot of myths they were there against the community. They made sure that they are debunking each of them. And they said that okay, they are really a part of our country and we should be giving them an equal opportunity, right? That initially that particular part, right, I'm sure you have heard about the madarsa. So there was a myth that the Muslims are sending their students only to the madarsa, but that was not the case, right? We have 66% of the Muslim children are there in the government, uh, in the government school and 30% are there in the private school. Yes. Are we clear? Debunking, so something which is a myth, right? And we debunk it. For example, when we say that, you know what? Uh, let's suppose any scientific information that we have, we know that it's it's not true. We will debunk it. Madarsas, madarsas are the Muslim school, right? Okay. I hope that are we clear, right? Yes. With this, everyone, let's move to the last part of this particular chapter, which talks about the safeguard. How we can do the important articles, everyone. Okay, last slide, the second point was what? This one. 
Yes, Manjeet, which point you're talking about? So according to the report, they, they find it that the, the students who are dropping out from the the students who are dropping out from the school are more. Okay? Clear? Manjeet. Okay. Now let's talk about it everyone. All important articles on this. First take a screenshot. Take a screenshot. Yes, take a screenshot. Very good everyone. Debunking. Pavni, uh, debunking ka matlab. For example, koi bhi. जैसे कि बोलते हैं कि अच्छा नाम बिल्ली के रास्ता काटने से दिन अच्छा नहीं जाता अब वो हमें पता है कि सही नहीं है अगर हम उसे प्रूफ कर दें अगर हमारा दिन अच्छा जाए बिल्ली ने रास्ता काटा फिर भी हमारा दिन अच्छा जाए तो हम उसे डी बंक कर रहे हैं या फिर आप कोई एक्सपेरिमेंट कर रहे हो और उसे पता चल रहा है कि वो जो कोई फैक्ट बोले थे वो गलत है तो उसे आपने डी बंक कर दिया ठीक है विद अ प्रूफ आपने उसे झूठा साबित कर दिया तो इसी तरीके से डी मतलब मुस्लिम की एजुकेशन सिस्टम में भी काफी सारे मिथ से उन्हें डी बंक किया गया क्लियर Yes. Okay, everyone. Let's talk about yes. अभी भी समझाया भी नहीं था. Yes. हाँ, Pranjal. Proving myths wrong. Absolutely correct. So we have Article 14. Remember these, everyone. Please make sure you remember them. So Article 14 talks about that no person shall be denied equal treatment before the law for the equal protection of law within the territory of the country. Hello, Vishali. So basically, Article 14 is saying that के Everyone has an equal right. If it's me, you, any individual, be it the ST, SC, whatever tribes we have, whatever caste system we have, whatever education system we have, everyone has an equal right under the Article 14. And if we can go and fight and get the justice. Then Article 15 talks about that no citizen shall be discriminated against on the grounds of the religion, race, caste, sex or a place of birth. We should not be doing any discrimination against the people. Then Article 32 and 22 to 6 talks about that the constitution remedy is guaranteed in each case of violation of the fundamental rights by the Supreme Court. Just, just in case, right? Just in case if we feel that okay, my fundamental rights have not been taken care of or I am not getting the fundamental rights, I can go to the Supreme Court and I can fight a case against the culprit. Are we clear? Are we clear? Race, uh, hardship over here in terms means that we have different races, hai, right? We have countries, we have races. We have Indians, we have Americans, and we have origin Anglo Indians in India. Mein kafi sare. So, race over here that means. Remedy means Pranjal kuch upaye nikalna. Clear? A solution to it. Everyone, are we clear? Yes, 50,000. Everyone clear, clear cow. Very quick everyone. Thumbs up. Yes. Very good. So Pallavi, I'll just repeat for e everyone. Repeating all of this for each one of you. So there are three important acts we have. From the constitution. Constitution ne bola ki article 14 hai. Ki hum, hum, humar, <coughs> excuse me. Article 14 ke sab se government ne bola hum sab ke paas mein equal rights hai. Hum, agar humar sab koi bhi ill treatment ho raha hai, hum, apne liye, Justice can fight for justice. Ke liye kar Article 15 talks about that there will discrimination nahi hoga in terms of caste, sex, date of birth. We should get equal treatment equal treatment. Milna and Article 32 and 2 to 6 talks about that if we are not fundamental rights, ko hame koi nahi de raha hai, fir fundamental rights, we can go to the Supreme Court. Ke paas ja sakte hai. Are we clear? Rani, sorry, Dia, sorry, Tina. Everyone, you can tell her how many fundamental rights we have. We have done a session on that. Okay. Clear everyone? Okay. Do you want a break? Jaldi say, do you want a break of two minutes? Right? Eight minute ka break chahiye. We'll just... I'll give you a small break. Nahi chahiye? Yes chahiye. Yes? No? Okay. So we'll... We will be starting with the next chapter. That is confronting the marginalization. Now, how do we confront karenge? Now, we have an understanding that we should be very fair. We should not be treating people unequally. Discrimination nahi hona chahiye. Now that we are clear with that, we will be seeing that how we can confront it. As an adult, as an educated individual, how we should take it, right? Yes, so let's look over here. So, in this particular chapter, we have four important topics. Please take a screenshot, everyone. 
This is important for us to remember. I'll just drink water. Yes. <coughs> Very good. Chali everyone. Okay. So ha, yehi break tha mara thoda sa. Small, tiny, little, cute break. So these are the important topics we have in this particular chapter. Let's talk about it. But before that, we are starting with a poem from a very famous poet over here. Right? Sorabai. Not a creature has been born except in a bloody womb. Right? And of course, it, she talks about the discrimination we had for the people. She was a very famous poet. Right? And of course, she talks about that how the people have the discrimination. Right? Especially at that particular time for untouchable people. There will be whole one community because if they are doing a work of leather or if they are working in a field or something like that, people will not consider them as talkable or they will be like untouchable people. People will not be talking to them. Right? Over here, she belongs to a caste which were called as Mal uh, Mahar caste. Right? Yes. Right. Yeah. And of course, she saw the evil practice of untouchability and she wants to make sure that you know she raised her voice against it she said that all of us are born equal right there is no difference between the individuals all of us everyone is born equal right and of course she said that it's a thought that we have right that actually pollutes us so we should be thinking about good thoughts right we should have the good practices and we should believe the individual rather than questioning them on just their caste. So this can come in your examination but this is a very important information for us to know. Then let's talk about how we can confront it. How we can confront it everyone? Three marks question. Yes everyone. Here we have three marks question. How we can confronting? How we can confront it? We can actually do of course by educating people by protect pro, by protesting against such conditions right then the government should be intervened the government should take part should interfere in these matters and should address their griffins right should address their sorrows should address their problems government should be there to help them then of course it is government responsibility to protect everyone's right so this is really very important, right? It can come in the examination in this way. And you just have to write three points, which are these points. Okay? Make sure to remember all of these points, everyone. It's important. Then let's talk about the right and justice. Yes. Okay, tell me everyone, what do you think about the right and justice? We have our rights, right? Right of equality, right of freedom of speech. We have other rights, right? What is the difference between right and justice? Yes? Pranjana, I will explain you. One minute. Yes? So basically, it's talk about that the people, right, who are there, they should, they will be protesting and they will be speaking up for themselves. They should come out and they ask for their rights. We, they should be educating them also. Right? Very good everyone. So let's talk about the right and the justice. So we talk about the rights, right? They are the common claim of the people that every civilized society recognizes as essential for its development. These are our rights. For example, if you have the right of education, it's a very basic right that each one of us should have, right? That will be helping in the development of the nation. So rights are the common claim by the people that will be helping in the development of the country. Rights are enforced by the state. They are one that uh, these rights are controlled by the state and made sure that they are there. Then rights allow the people to live without any fear of exploitation. So once we have these rights, we can clearly say that no, this is not my right. This is my right. I have to do like this. Right. This is come. Now in the rights also, when we talk about the right, we have all of it. Now justice. What does mean justice is basically fairness. Access to the justice. If there's something wrong happening to me, right? If I'm not getting the education or something which is happening, 
I should have the right that I need the justice. I need my fairness, right? I should have the access to the access to go to the court so that I can fight for myself. Are we clear? Yes. Clear everyone? Yes, justice also means to protect other rights, right? It's really very important. Very good, Gun Gun. Access to all rights is a justice. Absolutely correct. Very good, innocent, Harshit. Yes, absolutely correct, Harshit. Yes, Tina. Yes, Fardos. Okay. Now that we are clear with this, there's a very important term. I'm sure we all will be uh, kind of aware about the word Dalit. The word Dalit basically means broken in Hindi, in English. Okay. Dalal. Dalit means in terms of Hindi, it means broken. And of course, in when we write it in English, we call it as broken. So Dalit ka... Of course, it's a very uh, term, it's a very strong term which we use by the, uh, you know, lower, uh, initially in a, in, in a parts of a country for the lower caste people. But now, of course, it's kind of banned. We should not be using this, right? And of course, in place of that, we have the official term, which is the scheduled caste. Are we clear? This is very important for all of us to remember. So now there's a change into that, right? Of course, we will not be calling it and this is not the correct thing. Very good. Now moving to the next, fundamental rights. Very important thing everyone. See, now what we'll be discussing is super important from the exam point of view. Directly you can take a screenshot from here and that can come in your examination. We have article 15 we have just discussed which actually prohibited any discrimination based on the grounds of religion, caste, right, race, sex and the place of birth. Then we have article 17 which abolish the untouchability. These articles can come, can come in your examination. The, the examiner can ask you to write, okay, write about the article 15 or write about the article 17. What we mean by untouchability, it's a very evil practice which were there, right? Especially for the uh, lower caste people, done by the upper caste people, they were not allowed to you know touch they were they were not allowed to enter the temple they were not allowed to drink the water from the same well okay so this got abolished which is very very important which was very right thing then of course we have article 25 to 28 talks about the right of freedom of religion of individuals and religious group any individual can follow any religion if they want whatever they want to feel they want to actually practice then we have article 29.1. It actually grant the protection to the minority interest, especially with, with respect to the language, script and the culture. So article 29.1 protect the minorities, their culture, their languages. Then we have article 31. It guarantees to all the minorities that whether based upon the religion or on the language, the right to establish and administer the education institute of their choice. So, we have different types of communities, right? They, if they want to, they can actually build their own educational institution for their children to follow it. Are we clear, everyone? See, this is a little bit trickier over here for us to understand. But are we clear? Article 31, 30, the first part talks about that. Minority people can actually form their education institution so that their cultural in, uh, cultural information can remain intact and their kids can study. Clear? Nobody will stop them from making an educational institution. And they can send their kids to any of the institution. Yes, very good. Then, we have the cultural justice. Fairness to all the people to follow their culture, to follow their belief, right? And of course, if at all, if someone feels that their this right is being not taken seriously, they can definitely file in, fight in the court. Clear? These things are there so that they don't lose their identity. Right? I'm sure you must have seen the movies where the Indians will go to the foreign countries and they will feel that, oh, they, are, they don't have their own identity. Right? If they follow their own culture, if they follow their own traditional, they feel that they have an identity. So this is really very important and we should not be taking all of these. Then comes easy peasy, the easiest of all, the fundamental rights, right? Dr. B.R. Ambedkar called Article 32, 
the soul and the heart of the constitution and article 32 talks about to guarantee the constitutional remedy to help the people if there's any need right whatever be the caste race religion of the individual the constitution is there with the people we always say right the constitution is for the people right everyone i'm sure you agree to that right it's for the people so article 32 guarantees the constitutional remedy yes everyone has a right to avail remedy by approaching to the supreme court if their uh, fundamental rights are being violated if people are not getting their fundamental rights we can go to the court absolutely correct adiva for the pe for the people by the people and of the people yes very good okay are we clear with this come on come on we are clear with this right awesome so till now we have discussed so much these articles are really important everyone can you answer this question for me article 29 1 and article 39 part 1 are essential in achieving cultural justice yes or no it's very easy true or false everyone is it true or false yes yes very good very good it's true 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 absolutely correct this is absolutely true okay okay everyone now we are moving to the last part of it okay last part we have the social justice now we'll see what we have in the social justice we have talked about the right and justice fundamental rights and now we're talking about the social justice now social justice is the meaning that we have the equal rights and opportunity for all yes we have the mentee in the end just 15 minutes more social justice means equality for all right be it the girl or be it the boy be it a person from a upper caste or be a, a person from the lower caste all of us should have the equal opportunity in terms of education in terms of jobs right so this becomes a social justice we have various welfare policies where the government have made sure that all the people are getting equal opportunities so we'll be looking into it everyone this is a very crucial part of this chapter please take a screenshot here and where where you want to right this is a very important part okay can you tell me the first first important thing over here how many of you have heard about the reservation policies raise your hand everyone come on come on raise your hand what you uh, are you aware about the reservation policy or arakshan i'm sure jabi bhi have you heard about this right there's always a reservation done by the government for the uh, for the scheduled tribe and for the scheduled caste and for the other minor communities so that they have an equal opportunity in the government jobs in the government roles right so the government has the reservation policies and its main aim to uplift these scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes that they didn't have the chances in the history they have the disadvantage right but now they are actually helping them so this is very important it includes the reservation in the terms of the education institution may seats are reserved government employment may there are seats reserved for the scheduled tribe and for the scheduled caste and for the others clear so the one way the government is helping them is providing them the reservation are we clear the first social justice we have over here is the reservation policies by the government in that of course we know that these people will be writing the examination right the people who belong to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe will be writing the examination they will be reserved seat in the education institution and in the government jobs right and they will be able to right they will be able to participate in all the examination they will have a proof of the certificate basically they belongs to so and so caste and tribe and the government will be issuing the service of uh, certificate and they will be participating into these examination right they can go usually what happens the cutoff percentage for these reservation policies is a little bit low right and people have to get that marks to actually clear out the examination yes purnima you are saying that approximately the numbers as of now changes yes okay 
That's the first thing that the government did. Second is the prevention, the prevention of the Atrocity Act 1989. A very, very important act, everyone. Take a screenshot of this, everyone. Please take a screenshot of this. Right? I'm sure you can see this over here. Now, what we know that this act came to a picture in the year 1989, right? And it was by the demands of the Dalit group in the South India. This act basically talks about the discrimination against the Dalit and the Adivasis as a crime. Yes, so what happens in the lower part? Take a screenshot everyone. Yes, in the lower part, right in the southern part of the country. Yes, uh, what had happened basically there was a lot of discrimination against the uh, people. Right? Lot of discrimination were there. So pranjaris means that very bad behavior, extremely cruel behavior. Clear? So there was a very bad behavior, very cruel discrimination against the people of basically Adivasis people and the Dalit people at that particular time. So they came, all the people came into the action and they said, okay, we need a rule. We need an act to protect ourselves. And that's how we have this act which came into the picture in 1989. And according to this act, if anyone who is harming them or disrespecting them or there's a discrimination against these people, they will be punished by the law. Are we clear? Yes, are we clear everyone? This is a very important thing which happened in the year 1989. So first thing of course over here, moral repression level. Basically, there should be no crime against the people. <coughs> There will be no crime against the people. We cannot force them to work. Then the uh, dispose of Dalit and Adivasis of the resources. We cannot take the resources and cannot force them to not use their resources. Then comes the last point. Crime against the women. It becomes a very punishable offense. If there is any crime against the women, that person will be facing the heat of the government. Are we clear? Yes. So these are the basic important things we have to remember about the prevention of the Atrocity Act in the year 1989. Three marks question everyone. Okay, three things over here. Domestic violence. There are times I'm sure you must have seen if these people are working in a domestic um, Domestic help, right? They'll not be treated well. They My people will take their salary, will you know, dis disrespect them. Okay. Then everyone, let's talk about the case study of C.K. Janu over here. I'm sure if you have chapter chapter, you know about her. If not, we'll just discuss. So she was a very, very, very brave activist, right? And basically, she felt that the government have made the rules and regulation. But there are times when the government is not looking at the loopholes which are there. So the government enables the dis uh, you know, displacement of the tribals. From, from the traditional land, the government, this is government ne bola ke ha, you can move, but why they should move, right? Think about it everyone, government should not be asking the people to move. Just in case if they are asking, they should provide them as a good shelter and a good, good livelihood. So she said that why you, you are asking our people to move first of all. Then she said ke, if we take goods from the forest, you call us that we are actually encroaching. But if the non-tribal people, the big company people or people with the money, if they're coming to the forest and when they're exploiting the natural resources, you don't say anything to them. So that's why she questioned these things, right? And then she said that you are declaring the national park and other things as the you know, national parks and other things. What will happen to the Adivasis? So there were basic questions that was asked. Okay. And of course, government took actions. And now, of course, we have things which are better for the Adivasis people. Clear everyone? Yes? Are we clear with this? Come on everyone. Very very important part. Very good. Okay, one more poll question everyone. The prevention of the atrocyte, uh, or Atrocities Act 1989 was a result of what? Government initiative demands by the Adivasis and uh, Dalit or protest by the upper caste none of the above. It's an easy peasy question everyone. We'll have Menti in 5 minutes, come on. 5 more minutes everyone. Very good, very good. 
Everyone, please make sure to hit the like button. Yes, please make sure to hit the like button and absolutely correct. The correct answer is over here. Option B, demand of the Dalit Adivasis. Very good. Okay, the last part of this everyone, manual scavengers and their rehabilitation act which were there in the 2019. So, I'm sure you have heard about the manual scavengering. Right, so these, these are the people who will unfortunately, right, they are the people who will be clearing out the animal waste or the human waste manually. I'm sure back, back, long, long back, right? Back when, uh, back then, uh, we don't have a proper washrooms facility. So of course, people have, people will be actually going out. And yes, yeah, so people will be going out. These people were the one who will be taking care. They will be actually collecting all the human waste or the animal waste. Will be carrying them on their head and then will be dumping it somewhere else. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how hard it will be for any individual? Right? They were actually doing it for many centuries. Many generations are doing the same thing again and again. Right? This is not at all right. Still in few parts of a country. Mostly it's not there. But you might find such activity here and there. Which is very, very bad. Yes, I know Gungun. There are few parts of a country where we still have these such practices. We should not be there, right? They are the one who will be clearing the, you know, uh, basically the pipelines outside that we have our homes. They will be clearing it. Which is not a good thing, right? So, the government actually came with an act with the employment of the manual scavenger and construction of the dry latrine prohibition act in the year 2013. Sorry, in 1993, they banned this activity first of all, right? They said that these people will not be doing any of such activities, right? And later we will study that in 2013, we have an act also. Then... We have the formation of Safai Karamchari Andolan, right? They were, they, these manuals, scavenger at that particular time, came together, right? These Safai Karamchari came together and as of 20, 2003, 1 lakh people of the Dalit community who were employed as the manual scavenger, they were still doing that part, right? But of course, slowly, slowly the government took some actions and now they don't have to do it. Yes, Manjeet, it was 1930, uh, sorry, 1993, it got banned. Prohibition means uh, pranjal will not be happening. Stop, basically. Prohibition means stop. Manjeet, it was 1993, it, the ban was there on the manual scavengers. Right, and we'll be learning about the act which came into the picture in 2013. Yes, okay. So, why they were doing this job? Because of the sheer lack of education. They didn't get an opportunity to study. And once, of course, we know that if they're not educated, they'll not be able to apply for the jobs and other things. So they were kind of, they didn't have the education and that was the reason why they are doing these jobs. So government made sure that they have an act into the action, right? And it prohibited the construction of the incendiary toilet. So now the toilets are kind, the construction of the toilets become really more sensible, right? Then, of course, it actually prohibited employment of anyone as a manual scavenger. According to the 2013 Act, now, no individual should be working as a manual scavenger. If we are doing, if we are asking someone to do this job, we are the defaulty, right? That person can take some action on us. We should not be doing that. And provide the scope for to skill train them and to move them into a better conditions and to provide them the needs that they have. Are we clear everyone? Yes, are we clear? Come on, come on. Yes, we will have Menti now. But after some time, are we clear? Are we clear with this? Can we quickly summarize everyone now? Yes. So here we have the summary. Definition, take a screenshot everyone. Take a screenshot. Marginalization, right? When a group of a people considered insignificant by the state and the society at large, we call them as the marginalized group. And these groups have a disadvantage and they always have a fear. Then we 
spoke about the Adivasis and the Muslim, how they feel about being cornered by the society. Then of course, we studied about these articles, very important articles everyone, take a screenshot. I will share the PDF with you on Telegram, so please make sure to download there also. Then of course, we talked about the social justice and we talked about the different act. Clear? With this, I'll say thank you and with this, all of you, let's move to the menti. I need a full screen now. Uh, I, everyone quickly go on www.menti.com Use the code 66931419 Okay, quickly everyone Now I'll be moving Can we have a full screen? So can we have a full screen? And I will be moving now Yes Okay, okay yeah, Thank you for the full screen and Here we have, okay I got it Yes, everyone very very good. So here we have, I hope that all of you have joined. Please tell me everyone if you have joined the mentee, give me a, uh, you can write in the, no issues, no issues, yes. <coughs> Those of you who have some difficulties, yes I am waiting everyone, what you have to do, you have to go on www.menti.com. Then you have to use the code double six nine three one four one nine. Okay, waiting everyone quickly join. Yes, double six nine three one four one nine. Yes, very good, very good everyone. Okay, so all of you. You'll have some time to write your names, right? Write your name everyone and we will wait here for all of you. Yes, quickly, quickly. Okay, we'll start in a bit. We will start in a bit. Please make sure. Please make sure you are here. Okay. We'll start in 10 seconds everyone. All the best. 1, 2, 3, okay. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here we have. Yes. All the best everyone and let's get started. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 7, 8, 9 and 10 everyone. Okay, here we have the question number 1 on your screen. It will be a rapid fire everyone and here we go. Certain groups feel marginalized due to the factors like, what do you think? Social, social and cultural, economic, political or all of these. Very easy question, right? There are certain set of people who feel they are marginalized due to the factors like, it's because of social and culture, economics, political or all of these. Yes. I can see the answers but you don't have to write in the comment section everyone. Quickly vote. And if you, all of you vote, we will actually uh, move. Everyone has voted. So awesome everyone. 35 of you have voted for the correct answer. So all of these, you know, all of these are the very important factor that can actually make a person sideways, right? Very good. Question number two, everyone, on your screen, and here we go. Let's see question number two. How much is the population of the Adivasis in country? You have to write the percentage. Very easy, right? How many? What is the percentage of the Adivasis that contributes to the population of a country? Uh, Apurva, you have to go on www.menti.com. A new web page open karoge bachya. Mahape aap dekhoge www.menti.com. Fir, you they will be asking for the code and code here. It's double six nine three one four one nine. Everyone quickly vote. It's a very easy question. And the correct answer is option number C. 30 of you have voted for the correct answer. Percentage is 8. Total percentage is 8. Okay. Question number 3 everyone. Question number 3 on your screen. Here we go to the next question. Question 3. Here we go. Dash is a locality which is populated by the large number of members of people in the community. Ek jaga ko kya bolte hain jahan pe same community ke log rehte hain. Easy peasy everyone. Yes. Everyone it's a very easy question. All of you quickly vote. Yes. Yes come on everyone. Yes. Everyone after this we have bio ka class right. Well Ashwara ma'am will be teaching you about the Reaching the age of adolescence, please make sure to join that class. 
Very good. Option number A is correct and 23 of you have voted for the correct answer. Very good. Very good. Super proud of you. Yes. Okay. Question number 4 everyone on your screen. Chat is misleading. Everyone focus. We have started this today only. The minorities are forced to live on the margin of the economy and social development is known as what? It's a name of the chapter only. Our chapter's name hai. Jaldi se. Malnutrition. Basically ma malnourished. We have marginalization. This place for all of these. What is the name of our chapter everyone? That is the answer. I can tell you. I know that I am leaking the answer but it's very easy. Hai. Yes. When a minorities are forced to live on the margin of the economy and social development. We call it as. Very good option number B. And 36 of you have voted for the correct answer. Very good everyone. It was a very easy question I would say. Okay question number 5. Question 5 everyone. This place refer to the people who are compelled to move from their houses to the development. What we call it as right. Is it true or false? We know that we are moving the people right from there from their places right uh, for the big development of the projects like dam mining is it true or is it false it's very easy displace you remember displacement right displacement and remember how displacement ke baare baat ki thi. very good and the correct answer is true right the statement is absolutely true very good 25 of you have voted for the correct answer okay now I think we'll have the leaderboard everyone. Seems like we have the leaderboard. Let's see who's the fastest. So here we have the fastest. Fastest is Arun. We have the Nayushman. We have Deepa Shri from class 5th. Very good. We have Om. We have Manjeet. Yes, it won. Sakshi, Chetan. We have Kati, Srijani and Avni. Very good. Okay. Note your marks everyone. Right. And of course, very important thing. Very important notification for all of you. Please make sure to download the Baiju's app. 19 December, that is today, we have an amazing quiz at 7 p.m. So make sure you're joining that. And let's see the question number six. Question six, everyone, on your screen. Come on, come on. Who out of the following are facing inequality due to the marginalization? Who among these are facing inequality, basically? Dalit, women, Adivas, or all of these? It's a very easy answer. Super easy question, right? Seems like we know that what will be the correct answer for this. Yes, very good, very good. I'm sure you know the correct answer. Who among these are feeling facing the inequality? Inequality con face kar on a daily basis for their rights, for their things. The correct answer is option number D, and 24 of you have voted for the correct answer. All of them, be it the women, Adivasis, Dalit, all of these are facing inequality. We have to fight for them. Question 7, question 7 on your screen. Here we go. I'm, I know that all of you are asking for rapid fire and here we have. Which is the article of constitution that states that untouchability is abolished? Which article state that, that the untouchability is abolished? We cannot practice it. Yes, you can do the quiz from the Baiju's app. You have to download the app. From the, it's absolutely free. You have to just download the app. Yes, Article 16, 18, 28, or 17. You remember we have just studied. Very good. Yes, Chaitanya. We have studied it. Okay. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is Article 17. Very good, everyone. 26 of you have voted for the correct answer. Let's move everyone to question number 8. We have to quickly bind this our session because Ashwara ma'am is waiting. Yes. How does the government ensure the end of inequality in the country? How does the government ensure kar hai? Right? Through the laws, through the reservation, both A and B, none of these. How the government is trying their best to make sure that the people are, you know, getting the fair chances. We don't mind, I'm just cleaning the tablet for the Ashwara ma'am. That's because we'll not have that much time later. Very good, everyone. Very good. Yes. And the correct answer to this question is option C, both A and B. The government is making sure that inequality is kind of keeping in check by through the laws and through the reservation. Very good. Question number nine on your screen. 
Okay, I think over here we have. Yes, let's see question number 9 everyone. <coughs> okay, what do you understand by this manual scavenging? Right, they work by the machine, they work by hand, they work by power of none of these. It's a very easy question, right? Very good Adiva, 8 out of 8, that means that you have paid attention to the chapter and I am very proud of you. Yes, okay. Yes, very good, very good everyone. Yes, and the correct answer is option B, working. Working by this, scavenging by the hands. Absolutely correct. 30 of you have voted for the correct answer. Okay, last question everyone. And we will end the session. Come on. Nice. Okay, when did the Supreme Court ban the practice of manual scavenging? In which year? Complete ban on the practice. We have just discussed, right? Yes. <coughs> and the correct answer is 1993. That's very good. Very good. Okay, everyone, we are running out of time. And here we have the correct answer, everyone. Here we have the correct answer. Yes, fastest is Om and Arun. Very good. Then we have Sakshi, Avni, Chaitanya, Raj, Deepashri. Then we have Gungun, Chetan, Manjeet. Very good. Congratulations. Congratulations, everyone, to each one of you who have participated. And I hope that now you are the master of this chapter. And we always say we have got you covered, everyone. Please make sure to hit the like button for the video and subscribe to the channel and share this video. I really want to stay and talk to you, but we don't have time. As sure as I have the class. So I'll go, everyone. If you have any doubts, write in the comment section. I will be replying to your doubts, right? And with that, we'll end. Lots of love to each one of you, everyone. And please make sure to hit the like button. Leave a comment how you felt about the class. Very good, everyone. Very good. I'm super proud of each one of you. Lots of love and bye-bye and keep on learning with Baijus. Ta-da!